I just don't believe in the New York Giants. Hell to the the New York Giants had a great season in 2022. They were way better than they should have been, and I can't say enough good things about Brian Dable. He completely turned around the Giants, but you do have to wonder if they've hit their ceiling. <laughs> On paper, the roster still isn't that good, and New York is stuck in a pretty good NFC East division. It's easier said than done, but they made sure this offseason to keep their star players together and tried to continue to build around them. But a lot still needs to improve if the Giants are going to be a serious contender. Luckily, they have the head coach to get them there. The Giants went 4-13 in 2021, and something needed to change. So, they fired Joe Judge in what was his second year, and went on to hire Brian Dable. Dable was coming off of a lot of success in Buffalo as the Bills' offensive coordinator, and he even got a lot of the credit for the development of Josh Allen. Before that, he had a lot of success already coaching in the league, mostly in New England, where he won five Super Bowls. Now, it didn't take very long for the Giants to see improvement. Despite a pretty similar roster, New York was actually good last season. They ended up going 9-7-1, and and while that was still third in the NFC East, they made the playoffs as a wild card and managed to beat the Vikings before losing to the eventual NFC champ Eagles. New York didn't make it past the divisional round, but they did totally exceed expectations and it earned Brian Dable coach of the year. What Brian Dable was able to do with almost the same roster and a huge lack of talent is so impressive. And a lot of that success came from the improvements of Daniel Jones. The Giants took Daniel Jones sixth overall back in 2019, and it was a pretty criticized pick, but he went on to have a pretty solid rookie season with 3,000 yards and 24 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. It was a good, promising year, but over the next two seasons, he didn't improve much. Jones only threw 11 touchdowns in his sophomore season, and he followed it up with just 10 in 2021. Now, one of the big issues with Jones was always turnovers. He led the league in fumbles in 2019 and 2020, and over the first three seasons of his pro career, he fumbled 36 times and threw 29 interceptions. He was a turnover machine, but not under Brian Dable. Just like Dable did with Josh Allen in Buffalo, suddenly Jones was more secure with the football. Jones had just five picks and six fumbles last year, both of which are career bests. He did only throw 15 touchdowns, but completed the highest percentage of his throws in his career and had 3,205 passing yards, 708 rushing yards, and 7 touchdowns, all of which were career highs. There were a lot of questions surrounding Daniel Jones and his future in the Big Apple, but after last season, the Giants paid him. He got a four-year, $160 million deal, but he wasn't the only important Giant with an expiring contract. Arguably the most important player on the Giants' offense last season was Saquon. Quan Barkley. He ended up setting a career high with 1,312 yards, and he scored 10 times. He looked a lot like his rookie self, which is still, don't get me wrong, by far the best year of his career. He had 1,307 yards. He also rushed for 11 touchdowns, had 721 receiving yards, and scored four times through the air, all of which were the best of his career. But we have been wondering if he was ever going to turn back into his old form. He was still good in 2019 with over a thousand yards, but in 2020, things kind of took a turn for the worst. In week two, he tore his ACL and he missed the rest of the year. He was healthy for most of 2021, but still had a bad season. He played in 13 games, but still had less than 600 yards. A lot of people were ready to write him off, but Barkley bounced back and the Giants wanted to keep him around this offseason, so they did franchise tag him. Now, the Giants and Saquon Barkley still haven't come up with any kind of long-term deal, so there's a very, very very good chance that this is going to be his last season in New York. 
but it's a good thing that he's there for another year, at least for Daniel Jones's sake, because the other weapons around him, well, they suck. The Giants wide receiver core is one of the worst in the league. Their expected number one is Isaiah Hodgins, who was literally claimed off of waivers in November after he spent time with the Bills. He went on to have 351 yards and four touchdowns in eight games in New York. It got him a one-year deal this offseason, and now Hodgins gets to spend a little bit more time with Brian Dable. The Giants' top receiver last year was Darius Slayton, who had over 700 yards. He'll be back, and Paris Campbell is the likely three. He is coming off of a career best season with 623 yards, but he still has less than a thousand yards in his four-year career, mainly because the dude just couldn't stay on the field. The Giants do have a few young guys that could make their way up into the mix, too. They took Wandale Robinson in the second round a year ago, but he only played six games as a rookie due to injuries and had 227 yards over the span. This offseason, the Giants took a stab in the third round, taking Tennessee's Jalen Hyatt. The wide receiver room overall is really weak, but the Giants made a splash this offseason to help the passing game, trading a compensatory third for Darren Waller. Waller hasn't been able to stay healthy for the past few seasons, and he He's 30. Add in his big contract, and the Raiders wanted him gone. Waller is kind of a lottery ticket. In the two years that he's actually played in more than 12 games, he's had over 1,100 yards and even led all tight ends with 107 receptions in 2020, the year he made the Pro Bowl. Waller is a great receiving tight end, but he's not a great blocker. And uh, the Giants' offensive line, they weren't very good last year either. They did use an early pick at the draft on center John Michael Schmitz out of Minnesota, who fills a pretty big need. The best guy on the line is easily Andrew Thomas. He was a second-team All-Pro last season, and he's finally starting to show why the Giants took him fourth overall in 2020, even if it did take some time, because he wasn't great early in the pros. New York used a first-rounder last year on offensive line two, Evan Neal, who went on to play in 13 regular season games after he went seventh overall. Neal wasn't even the Giants' earliest first-rounder in 2020, though. It was Kayvon Thibodeau. The Giants took Thibodeau at five, and he flashed as a rookie. In 14 games, he had 49 tackles, four sacks, and two forced fumbles. He was a bit controversial at times, but he did show some promise on the field, and theoretically, he should be better in year two. Now, the best player on the Giants' defense last season, and probably the best player on the team, was Dexter Lawrence. He was a second-team All-Pro after he had seven and a half sacks and two forced fumbles at nose tackle. Vet Leonard Williams is still in New York at defensive end and just had two and a half sacks last season, but did have 18 sacks over the two years prior. At linebacker, Aziz Ojalari had a solid sophomore season after he was a 2021 second rounder. He ended up with five and a half sacks in just seven games after he had eight sacks in 17 games as a rookie. The Giants this offseason signed Bobby Okereke to a four-year, $40 million deal. He had 151 tackles last year with the Colts. The secondary should hopefully be better than it was last year, especially at cornerback. The Giants need Adoree Jackson to actually stay healthy, but they did also just use a first-round pick on Deontay Banks out of Maryland. Then at safety, they have Xavier McKinney, but it gets a bit dicey after him. Overall, the Giants roster is pretty weak. They had success last season, but that might have been their ceiling. I find it very hard to believe that the Giants are actually going to be better this season than they were in 2020. The big question is going to be if they made the right decision with the Daniel Jones contract because they gave him a lot of money and they need him to live up to it. Add in the fact that Saquon Barkley is playing on an expiring deal again and the Giants offense might look completely different next season. That being said, I do very strongly believe that Brian Dable is the right guy to lead the Giants. And as long as he's there, I feel pretty solid about the future. They just still need a lot of pieces, and I don't exactly expect them to blow anyone away anytime soon.